the greatest barrier to adoption of LED in the rail sector is understanding the business case for taking on a new technology that they're not certain about. That's a job for the lighting industry to get a clear message across. The rail industry is very risk averse because of issues like passenger safety, so any change has to be carefully implemented. As far as we're concerned, we have to take away the risk to the client and make sure that what we specify is fit for purpose and does its job. The rail industry likes to do things that it's used to because they know it works, but uh, technology is forever adapting and changing that um, we want to try and implement the new things because we know they have certain benefits. There's a lot of work going into it, but we can't just adapt to it because it's the new thing. Some of the traditional procurement aspects within um, the rail industry, uh, there's, a, there's, a great, there's a great tendency, I believe, to sort of um, people to hide behind things like the standards. Yes, the standards are there, they're there for a reason and there are safety issues, but that's the problem. There's a sort of legacy of, oh, well, we've always done it this way, why would we want to do it that any, any differently? And, and, and nobody wants to be seen to sort of be the one that breaks the mould, I think. The old attitude of let's stick with high frequency fluorescent, let's just do what we've always done, is slowly over the last two, three years, those barriers and walls have come down, which is a good thing. So LED isn't the hard argument it used to be even two or three years ago. We have to bear in mind is all the technology that's happening within the industry, uh, all the different standards. How do we comply with those standards using uh, the digital age? Uh, of LED technology and integrating those within the systems, ensuring future compatibility for projects and so on. There has been some damage to the reputation of LED in the past with uh, poor quality product, a lack of standardisation of testing, making product comparisons very difficult. There's been a level of scepticism in, in some of our clients from the quality of products in the market and it's taken some time for the uh, technology to mature to a level where people are, are willing to make the investment now uh, with confidence that the product's actually going to deliver what we uh, believe it will for them. The main challenges of lighting in the rail sector would be perception. Does new technology work? Can it be trusted from other light sources that have been used over many, many years before that are still valid and, and currently work? Um, so if you bring that into the fore with, again, LED, people are saying, LED, what can it do for me? I think we need to get buy-in from all major stakeholders. We need to get people excited about the benefits of LEDs as well and address some of the concerns. With LEDs, they are changing so fast that we get our heads around a particular LED and then another one comes out and it might be a different size and shape and power and colour and colour rendering and we have to just understand that one, see if that works with the optics we've already got, seeing what opportunities it gives us for lighting and uh, pick that ball up and run with it as fast as we can. Obviously we have to plan forward and we have to look at the technology that's liable to be around when these items are procured, uh, which is probably two to three years from now. But it's a step change, it's educating as well the industry, uh, being made aware of the products that are now available and control. Uh, we really have to try and sell the solution with a control system attached to it to see real benefits. If you're designing a station, you can design a spectacular architectural space, but it needs to be functional, it needs to help people, passengers, uh, find their way through, it needs, the staff need to be able to safely and properly do their work. You need to consider the trains as well and how they approach the stations and all of, all of these sort of things together. LED technologies enable us to control lighting. So the big question we see in the rail sector is that when there are no people present uh, on station platforms, in car parks, etc., throughout the night when the last train has gone, the question we need to ask is why is the lighting still being run at 100% light output? We can dim the lighting down to maybe 50% with clever monitoring systems. We can detect if there's vehicular movement or pedestrian movement that then increases the lighting as and when required. So therefore we're reducing energy, we're increasing maintenance cycles and we're also combating lighting pollution. The main challenges we face in terms of bringing in new technology is always change, product acceptance, um, and making sure that something will be fit for purpose and answers all our needs really. 
there's less barriers to LED than people imagine. And I think it's up to the people in the industry to educate the people that don't know about the new technology. And once that education process solidifies and strengthens, then people will be very open to use the new technology. I mean, we all use mobile phones. We all use the, the latest flat screen TVs. People are open to new technology. It's the way you educate and, and sell that.